How you guys doing? Doing another video here because we had at least one naysayer in the last video and it kind of inspired me to pull up actual scripture and show you the scripture because a lot of times unfortunately what we have is people that have never read the Bible to its entirety trying to rightly divide the word of truth and if you don't know the word of truth you cannot rightly divide the word of truth that's foolishness and uh, and unfortunately uh, a lot of people probably aren't going to like what I have to say because the time is coming when they're no longer in sound doctrine but the, here's, a, here's, a, here's a spiritual truth that I know to be true that let's see so what we have really is people that are not truly born again, the people that haven't received the Spirit of Christ, and I'm going to get into these things because this is what happened to me. I have a testimony. I can testify of Christ because His Spirit is within me. I had a born-again experience. You do not have to prophesy. You do not have to speak in tongues to be saved. That's not what I'm saying. I was literally anointed with the Holy Ghost. I saw the whole thing happen. I know for a fact. I experienced it. I can testify Christ of Christ's resurrection and that He's in heaven because I have His Spirit. And I'm gonna, we're going to talk about that in a little bit. So what we have here a lot of times, too, is people that are not truly born again trying to make doctrines from Scripture they don't understand. Because the things that are spiritual cannot be discerned with a natural mind. You must be born again. When you're born again, you receive the Spirit of Christ. You also, be, your mind becomes spiritual. You have a spiritual mind. You have a new mind, basically. He, he, he refreshes, renews your mind. He washes you in spiritual water. You receive the Spirit. You have a spiritual mind now. You're a spiritual person. And, you know, just because you simply believe in Christ does not mean that you have a spiritual mind. Just like simply when he told the Pharisees, you know, you think you have life in the scriptures, but, you know, the life is in him, not in scriptures. Just because people read the Bible does not mean you are born again. I don't care what anybody tells you. That's a heresy. That's a lie. And it's foolish because it tells you right in scripture if you read the scripture. We have first... I forget uh, what, what verse this is, but this, you can look this up in Blue Letter Bible. This is the actual verse, but I forget the reference. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. Now, who's a natural man? Anybody who's not born again is a natural man. And we're going to get into what my, what my hope is for a lot of people, too, right after this. For they, for they are foolishness unto him. So some of the things that I, I some of the spiritual things that I... That are, that are revealed to me when I read the scripture and, you know, the spirit of truth, the, you know, the advocate, the helper, the Holy, the Holy Spirit teaches me, I, um, I, I repeat here. And, you know, that's stuff that God has allowed me to understand. It says, uh, and this is their foolish to him, to, foolishness to him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Because unless you are a spiritual person, unless you've been born again, you are not going to understand all the doctrines. Hence, all the problems that, 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 that come between different denominations and believers within the denominations because not all the believers are born again. You can go to church, look to the left, look to the right of you. Chances are those people are not born again. Here's my hope. I, I, this is something I, I believe God revealed to me. I was reading the Valley of Dry Bones one day, right? And it, and it, came, it came into my heart that this is what's going to happen on the resurrection of the just. In the Valley of Dry Bones, what he did is the, the prophet, God spoke to the prophet, gave the prophet a message, and the prophet spoke to the bones. The bones, it's more, the, the crux of the story is the bones were bringing up, brought up in the air and wrapped in flesh, and then he put his spirit in them. You know what I'm saying? Upon the resurrection, he rose them from the dead, rose the bones from the dead, wrapped them in flesh, gave them bodies, and then he put his spirit in them. So that tells me God does not do anything in vain. God is not a stupid person. So don't even tell me for a moment God doesn't know what he's doing because I will rebuke the hell out of you. And uh, <laughs> I so wouldn't anybody else that has any sense. But um, no, I won't do that. I'll be peaceful about it. But it just it kind of irks me, you know. You know, anyone that thinks they know better or more than God. But my, my point is he doesn't do anything in vain. He did that for a reason. That's a picture of what's going to happen on the resurrection of the just. A lot of people that believe that have their believers, they believe in their heart, and I'm not saying they're not saved. I, I, I'm not saying their names aren't in the book of life. Their names probably very well are in the book of life, but they haven't received the spirit yet. You know, and a lot of people, a lot of what, what the people that are going to be reconciled is a mystery. These people who think they decide that they're saved and that they're born again, you don't decide when you're born again. I, 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 let, let me, let, I was going to get into this later, but let me get into this now. I was lying in bed one day, and this is years after I, I, I had gotten lost. And, uh, you know, for 20 years or so, and 
I was lying in bed one day, and the Lord, I saw the whole thing happen. He anointed me with the Holy Spirit. I saw him and felt him anoint me with the Spirit. The Spirit was blues and purples. And he, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful in some reds. He was, he's beautiful. He's, he's God, glory to God. So I know that I was anointed and, um, and sealed with the Spirit of promise. And uh, glory to God for that. I did not do it. I didn't know an ounce of scripture. I didn't know any scripture. I just knew that Jesus. I just knew if Jesus Christ was sent by the Father, and I knew that I knew He was the Son of God. And I knew that He rose from the dead, and I believed it in my heart. I believed it in my heart when I was a little child, and that's what happened. And if we go on to the Book of Acts, if you're born again, you're going to know you're born again. And He goes. He says unto them in Acts 19:2. He said unto them, Have you received the 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 Holy Ghost since you believed. And they said unto him, We have not so much received, heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. They didn't even know there was a Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what then were you baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptize, ba baptism. So they were baptized in water, but they hadn't received the, bap the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You, you see it right here laid out in Scripture, simply and plainly. And he said unto them, Unto, you, unto what then were you baptized? And he said, Unto John's baptism. John baptized with water unto repentance. We read that in the Gospel of John. And um, so, like I said, I just want to point that out again. They were baptized in water, but they hadn't received the gift of the Holy Ghost. And we move on to Acts 19.6. It says, And when Paul laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. But you don't have to speak with tongues and prophecy to be saved. He who has not the Spirit of Christ is none of his. Romans 8.9. And we'll go through... Some of the born again scriptures. John 3 3, Jesus answered unto them and said, Verily, verily, truly, truly, I say unto thee, except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God cannot be received by flesh and blood. You must be born again of water and the Spirit. Jesus answered, John 3 5, Jesus answered and said, Verily, verily, I say, except the man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. It's not an intellectual thing. The being born again is not an intellectual thing. It is not my choice. It is not your choice. No one can come to the Father unless Jesus draws them to him. Okay? So it's not a choice. You don't choose when you're born again. Okay? It's not a choice. No one, let me repeat that. No one can come to the Father unless, unless the, no, I'm sorry. No one can come to Jesus unless the Father draws them to him. And Jesus reconciles us onto the Father. Okay? And then we move on. And um, we're going to go from here. Yeah, that's John 6, 4, 4. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him, and I will raise him up on the last day. So you tell me where that leaves a choice to decide whether you're born again and whether you're saved or not. Or do, you, do you have the book of life? Do you, do you dictate to Jesus Christ that he's going to write your name in the book of life? No. The, the Father draws you on to Jesus for Christ, gives you a heart to believe, and your name is written in, in the Lamb's book of life upon confession with the mouth and believing in your heart. If we believe in our heart that God raised Jesus Christ from the, death, from, from the dead and confess him as Lord, scriptures say we'll be saved. We confess him as Lord. You, 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 you confess, you, you, you agree, you say, you say you agree with your mouth and you, and, and you say, yes, Jesus Christ, uh, I, I believe you rose from the dead. You say that, you know, whatever we have, what, you, know, you know, there's many ways to say it. There's many ways to confess Christ. There's many different sentences you can use. There's only one way to God, that's through Christ. But there's many different sentences you can use to call upon Christ's name. So you have to call upon his name. You know, uh, all that, and the times will come, you know, when all that call upon his name shall be saved. So you're calling upon his name. And then, uh, you know, this is what I, what I started off with, 2 Timothy 4, 3, For the time will come where they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust will heed to themselves teachers having itching ears. And I'll say it again, a lot of people, because only, I think it's, it's, an, it's, it's a staggering number. I forget what the number is, but it's a staggering number. I, I looked up the statistic, what is it? Is it 20% or is it like, I don't know, I think it's 10%. Only 10% of professing Christians have read the Bible to its entirety. Or read it regularly. It's something like that, but it's well, either way you look at it, or either way you swing it. It's it's not a very good number. You know, most most people that go to church have not read their Bibles to its entirety, and they want to sit there and tell and, and tell you that they know how to rightly divide the word of truth. Foolishness. You do not know how to rightly divide a word the word of truth if you have not read the word of truth. So don't tell me you can if you haven't read the word of truth and you're not born again. You might understand some things, but there's a limit. God gives everything a limit. Christ has a spirit without limit. The angels have limits to what they can do with, with their power and miracles. 
we have limits. We have a limit to our understanding. We have, we have, we have, we have, we have limits in strength. You know, everything has limits. There's laws. There's limits in the laws. Uh, you know, in the natural world, and there's, you know, it's just common sense. Okay, and then we move on to John six three two, and it says, then said, then Jesus said unto them, verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not the bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. So. Eternal life comes from Jesus Christ. It comes by it comes it comes by Jesus Christ, and there is no way to the Father but by Jesus Christ. And uh, we don't decide when we're born again. Although you know we, the Father draws you to Jesus Christ, because no one can come to Jesus as the Father draws you to Him, or draws them to Him. And then we have the opportunity to also read the Scriptures and understand that we can also do this. If you know you have not received the Spirit of Christ. This tells us this in Luke 11, 13. If you have not received the Spirit of Christ, it says, If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts on your children, how much more will your Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them? And that ask them, Luke 11, 13. So it's in there to also ask them. So not everybody has the same experience, uh, you know, is, is what you can discern from that. I had one experience, the next person might have another experience. You know, I didn't, I, I, I just, be, I believed and I prayed when I was young, and God came and got and, and started working in my life. I didn't even read the Bible on my own. I was spiritually afraid. I, I, I can't explain that to you. You'd have to experience it to be spiritual. Like, you know, in the scripture, it says Saul was spiritually terrified, and David played the harp and the lyre or whatever for him to, to calm him down, to calm his spirit down, because he had a, like a, a murderous spirit. Well, I was spiritually afraid, and I had it on my heart that God wanted me to read, read the Bible. I read the Bible from for eight, 16, 8 to 16 hours straight every day until I finished it. With, with a few breaks in between. You know, maybe I got up and got a cup of tea or something like that. But my family told me they thought I was out of my mind. They thought I read the Bible too much. They thought I took it seriously. I told them that they, I, I was trying to talk, talk to them about, you know, the baptism of fire and stuff like that. They thought I was going to light myself on fire. That's how seriously they thought that I, they think that I take the word. And I do. But I'm not going to light myself on fire. Do you get what I'm saying? Let's not be foolish here. And um, I guess those are just some scriptures. You know, I, I talked a little bit about, about Calvinism, and that is not his doctrine. Um, you know, a lot of people, and a, it's usually like uh, a lot of the time, I, I can't speak for a lot of other denominations, but a, a lot of times in the Baptist denomination, and I've gone to Baptist churches, I, I don't, we're all the, the church is, is a body of Christ. You know, those who have the spirit of Christ and believe on Christ, those I know are his people. Everybody else is a mystery to me until we get to heaven. So I, my my words and my encouragement to you would be to pray fast, see, you know, pray fast, read the scripture, you know, try to do everything that the scripture says because it's what helps makes us pleasing to God. There are instructions in righteousness. You're, 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 he, we have a propitiation for a sin, so we, of course we're going to sin. We're not supposed to do it willingly, but we sin and don't know it. And those scriptures are instructions in righteousness so that we can be pleasing to God. Not that we're going to be able to do everything 100% of the time because we're not yet, not in these bodies and not here on earth. But, you know, that, that doesn't mean that we don't try. But, um, I guess, you know, I guess my thing, like, uh, I was inspired to do this because, you know, you know, someone had a disagreement, and uh, I'm just like, you're not disagreeing with me. You're disagreeing with God. I mean, where, where's that other scripture? Do I have it in here? And God has made the God has made the wicked, yea, even for the day of judgment. That's in your Bible. God has made the wicked, yea, even for the day of judgment. So you tell me how those people have a choice. If He made the wicked for the day of judgment, you tell me how they have a choice. Are they are they able to choose whether they're going to be saved? No, they're not. Let's not be foolish. Let's rightly divide the word of truth. I get, I, I get, I get a little heated sometimes because you know I have people like I said never read the Bible and aren't born again, and they're trying to tell me what doctrines are and what scriptures are. And you're not going to be able to sway me because I know what I know. You know what I'm saying? If you're born again, you have the Spirit of God. You know we're all the same mind. We'll all be of one accord. And the time's coming when they're not into a sound doctrine. And I hope I didn't ramble on too much or skip around too much. I hope everything was coherent. I hope this made sense for you, but I also wanted to bring scripture out and, bring, and give you verses instead of just, you know, talking off the top of my head for, for the most part and, uh, and and telling you about the verses without giving you the references. But um, I really I really hope that uh, people will see these videos 
and will call upon the Father and ask him for his spirit and to be born again and to believe on the faith. And if you have not received the spirit and you know you haven't received the spirit and it comes to the time where they start chipping people and it comes to the time where you may have to choose between taking that chip and getting your head chopped off, get put all your faith in Christ and get your head chopped off. And I can pretty much, get, you, you're almost guaranteed you're going to, you know, unless you did something damning, you're going to have the spirit of Christ upon the resurrection. He is not going to forsake you. He's not going to leave you. But, but we got to also remember, Christ also says that, you know, depart from me, I never knew you. He says that. I, for I never knew you. And it says, but then we read in the scriptures, he who has not the spirit of Christ is none of his. So you're, you, you will do much, sorry, you will do much better to seek and seek the baptism of the Holy Ghost while we're here on earth and not wait till the resurrection of the just. That's gambling. And, uh, you know, it also says in Scripture, you know, we don't know what the, if our ministering to certain people will lead on to their, will help them lead, you know, on to salvation or not. We know not whether those people are going to be saved or not. You know, and I, I, again, I hope I've explained everything coherently. And uh, I hope this has been a blessing. I hope I wasn't rude or anything. I hope I didn't come, <clears throat> come off crass or, or anything like that. Uh, I do this out of love. And I, now I, I, I do do it for my own benefit, but I, for, more importantly, I do it for your benefit because I know where I'm going. And uh, I want to make sure that everybody that believes or thinks they believe, and I'm not trying to create doubt in you, don't think that, that um, they're going to heaven. I want, I want as many people to go to heaven that can go to heaven. My prayer to God, you know, continually is God please save everybody that you're absolutely willing to save please save them all because I have family members and friends that don't believe I have family members and friends that you know I have a God put on my heart when I was when the day that he sealed me with the spirit that he's taking me to heaven and I cried because earth was the only thing I knew how foolish why would I cry about leaving earth and going to heaven are you kidding me I didn't know anything about heaven no one had ever taught me about it so I didn't know anything about it, you know, but that's me. Here, 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 here. Uh, let me give you an example. This just came to my heart right now. If I justify myself, my own mouth will con shall condemn me. So I was explaining myself, but at the same time, I'm also sitting here justifying myself. That is what we do not do at, at the Bema in front of Jesus Christ. We do not justify ourselves when we're at the Bema. Yeah, there's a good scripture in the book of Job that says, If I justify myself, my own mouth shall condemn me. And if I say that I'm perfect, it shall also prove me to be perverse. So we're not to say that we're perfect and we're not to justify ourselves because we're not going to justify sin. It's just not going to happen. Every, every sin is going to be paid for one way or another. It's going to be charged to something, to someone, or something. You know, it's going to be charged to someone, you know, a, a fallen angel or another group of people or a human, or it's going to be nailed to the cross. It's all going somewhere. You know, uh, it, 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 when he forgave it, he nailed it to the cross. It didn't just, it didn't really just, didn't go away on its own. For out the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. I hope this has, again, been all right for you guys. Um, I haven't made videos in a while, and uh, I hope to be making some more some here in the future. And uh, I'll talk to you guys again soon. Bye. Resurrection and that he's in heaven because I have his spirit. And I'm gonna we're going to talk about that in a little bit. So what we have here a lot of times, too, is people that are not truly born again trying to make doctrines from Scripture they don't understand. Because the things that are spiritual cannot be discerned with a natural mind. You must be born again. When you're born again, you receive the Spirit of Christ. You also, be, your mind becomes spiritual. You have a spiritual mind. You have a new mind, basically. He, re, he refreshes, renews your mind. He washes you in spiritual water. You receive the Spirit. You have a spiritual mind now. You're a spiritual person. How are you guys doing? Doing another video here because had at least one naysayer in the last video and it kind of inspired me to pull up actual scripture and show you the scripture because a lot of times unfortunately what we have is people that have never read the bible to its entirety trying to rightly divide the word of truth and if you don't know the word of truth you cannot rightly divide the word of truth that's foolishness and uh and unfortunately uh a lot of people probably aren't going to like what i have to say because the time is coming where they're no longer endure sound doctrine but the, here's a truth. And, you know, just because you simply believe in Christ does not mean that you have a spiritual mind. Just like simply when he told the Pharisees, you know, you think you have life in the scriptures, but, you know, the life is in him, not in scriptures. Just because people read the Bible does not mean you are born again. I don't care what anybody tells you. That's a heresy. That's a lie. And it's foolish. Because it tells you right in scripture if you read the scripture. 
we have first I forget uh, what, what verse this is but this, you can look this up in Blue Letter Bible this is the actual verse but I forget the reference but the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of God now who's a natural man anybody who's not here's a, here's a spiritual truth that I know to be true that let's see so what we have really is people that are not truly born, born again, the people that haven't received the spirit of Christ. And I'm going to get into these things because this is what happened to me. I have a testimony. I can testify of Christ because the spirit is within me. I had a born again experience. You do not have to prophesy. You do not have to speak in tongues to be saved. That's not what I'm saying. I was literally anointed with the Holy Ghost. I saw the whole thing happen. I know for a fact. I experienced it. I can testify Christ of Christ. is not born again as a natural man. And we're going to get into what my, what my hope is for a lot of people, too, right after this. For they, for they are foolishness unto him. So some of the things that I, I some of the spiritual things that I, that are, that are revealed to me when I read the scripture and, you know, the spirit of truth, the, you know, the advocate, the helper, the Holy, the Holy Spirit teaches me, I, um, I, I repeat here. And, you know, that's stuff that God has allowed me to understand. It says, uh, it, it, this is their foolishness 